Well, welcome to this Saturday broadcast. I thought um, for this weekend, I would do something um, a little different. And uh, today I'm going to actually show a video of a session that I had, an inking session that I had um, a few days ago. And I'm going to kind of walk you through it. Um, so to bring you up to date about what this inking session is about, um, I have a, a new website. Actually, I've had a website for quite a few years, but the website version that I built myself was never one that I was that proud of. And recently, some friends of mine, uh, the Maxims, John and Melissa Maxim, have re or re yeah, rebuilt that old uh, website. So it's much more professional looking and... So anyway, I'm trying to update that incrementally as time goes on here. And one of the features that I had on my old website from many, many, many years ago was a comic strip, a little panel, single panel feature called Launchpad. And I, uh, I did that back in the day when I was just starting after Eden for Answers in Genesis. And I was really excited about comic strips and, and stuff. So I started my own, but I kind of got burned out a little bit right in the beginning. I did a little too much at one time. So Launchpad had a bit of a short life, although I'd kind of like to kind of revive it a little bit here in the days ahead. So we'll, we'll see how that goes, but there's some old comic strips that just need some attention because I look back on some of that stuff and it's kind of embarrassing. So anyway, the, um, let's see, I'll bring up the, So here we have um, a good thing set here so I can converse with anyone that wants to jump on just in case somebody does. Um, let's see, here we have the, oh, that's interesting. If I play this live, hmm, I didn't think this part through too well, I guess. Let's see. If I play this live, I can't see the comments. This is a learning process, this live broadcast stuff. Um, so maybe what we're going to have to do is I'm going to change my plans a little bit here. And um, I've got the video that I'm hoping to play. So maybe I'm going to have to switch my... Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. We'll just switch applications here. Hang on just a second. Let me do this first. Um, I'll show you my website. And so there's my, uh, there's my current website. And it looks really, really nice. Thank you, Maxims, for doing that for me. And then if you go up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a set, uh, some, some pull-down windows. And uh, there's one called cartoons. And if you go there, you can see the, the launch pad um, section. There's there's a few comic strip sections, but launch pad. And again, this these were just meant to be quick to do. And so the style was a little more simple. And I'm looking back at them going, eh, I don't like them so much. So, um, so I'm going to uh, be redoing a few of these. And some of them might just kind of go away. Um, so let me... Um, let me start the video, if I can get this uh, accomplished here. Stop screen share, all right, and then screen share again. Again, this, this, uh, these little flubs along the way are valuable for me to, uh, to learn things as we go. Let's see. Yeah. So there I'm sharing the, um, so you should be seeing the QuickTime video that I'm, that I'm intending to share my, my inking session from not so long ago. So um, let me bring that up and then um, I'm just gonna hit play. I wanna talk you through what I'm doing in this video. So um, 
we're in Photoshop here, and this is the old comic strip that I want to uh, that I want to redo. And uh, again, there's there's just some little details that I kind of missed. Um, if you look right here, that hand is supposed to be in back of that little teardrop because the sister's in front. So again, I kind of you know whiffed on a few details, which looking back is kind of embarrassing. But and the look of the comic strip, as you as you grow as an artist, you get kind of embarrassed of things of the past. And so this is almost 20 years ago. That's kind of hard to believe. And it's got the URL for my old website, daneltoons.com. Now that that URL will eventually point to my new website, which is danletha.com. And I've got the banner running across the bottom of the screen there. So what we're going to do to redo this is I've taken this comic strip and I've put it into Photoshop, um, stretched it out, and I'm putting um, a, a white layer over the top of it so that um, so that I can draw on the top of that white layer and I can kind of see my ink drawing as I'm kind of re, re-pencil in a sense um, with a red line here. So I'm just kind of redoing, uh, making some corrections, uh, just reconstructing the hand, make it a little bit better, uh, better constructed and and hopefully improve on some of this artwork. So again, these sessions are to be informal. So if there's any viewers that could pop in, you guys wanna ask me some questions about the artwork or whatever it is, um, feel free to do that. Uh, this, this session here is gonna be about a half hour long. So um, there will be a part two. Now I'm drawing a line there to kind of give me a guideline for the arm and then, um, then I like to draw on each side. So I kind of draw maybe a, a little skeletal uh, line in the middle and uh, construct in the sleeve. And um, red is a color that I like to use to draw things in. And sometimes I use blue, uh, depending upon the, maybe the color of the background or whatever. It just has a nice contrast um, for me to look at. So, and um, this sleeve right here actually mm, probably shouldn't be there. And so in a little bit, I'm going to erase that because um, I realized that the arm coming up behind his head wouldn't kind of line up like that. So I want to make that sleeve go away. These are the little improvements, again, that you think through when you're re-looking at something. That's much better. So now that sleeve goes behind the head. You just see a little bit of it coming up. And um, I'm going to reconstruct his face. The face I thought was okay but I think it could be better. And so that's really the purpose of redrawing this whole thing. So I'm just drawing some orientation lines and that knows no. <laughs> One of the nice things about Photoshop again is that you can uh, hit Command Z and redo. So, so you can um, undo it and then you can redraw it. So computers do have a bit of an advantage sometimes, although they don't do the artwork for you. So don't make the mistake of thinking that, um, well, if you get a better computer, you'll be a better artist. Mm, you might be able to have a little more tools at your disposal, but they really don't improve your art. Um, you've got to have those tools up here as you're doing them. Now this mouth, I'm pretty much following what's below the, uh, you know, the, the original cartoon. I'm kind of tracing over that. And I'm thinking, you know, that mouth could be improved on a little bit more. And so what I'm going to do here in a little bit is um, I'm going to I'm going to raise that that upper lip so that it's closer to his nose because I think that's going to improve the the more maniac look of this this uh, brother that's tormenting his little his little sister. So we'll make that upper lip go away and then bring it back up closer. There we go. I think that works a little better. So. Get that cheek in the eye, and uh, the teeth. There we go. I think that works a little bit better. And you'll see when I start inking this that the inks that I'm going to I'm going to draw over the top of those red lines. I'm going to again. These are in layers, and so I can um, I can put a layer of red on top of the original, and then I can draw. Uh, a black lit line ink layer on the top of the red. And they're all separated so I can turn one off or one on as I want. 
So redrawing the ear. Again, that, that original ear was kind of small. I'm, I don't know what I was thinking on some of this stuff when I was just drawing. I think I was trying to just go fast. Some cartoonists have a really fast, loose little style, and um, and it works for them. And they've been like Gary Larson or some people. Even Gary Larson, when he started out drawing the far side, his drawing skills really weren't all that there. But for whatever the reason, the humor of his comic strips kind of overrode his lack of drawing ability. And so as time went on, he developed a style that uh, that really worked for him and became a bit more competent as time went, went on. So, and uh, it's just a funny, the, the style ended up working really well with the humor too. So, um, so it's something that can happen with practice. I think I was trying to develop a style kind of like, not like Gary Larson or anything, but something that I could do kind of fast. And um, I think that's part of what killed launch pad is I I wasn't having the satisfaction in the style and it just became another chore to get done as I had all this other pressure from other things going on so so I ended up um, just lightening the load so here we go with uh, the legs and some of this you might go well what's the difference you're kind of doing the same thing well following the same basic structure but um, some of the flow of some of the lines are a little bit different. And um, again, you got to make sure that leg is consistent. The little part that you draw at the bottom has to look like it actually fits in the rest of the, the pants. So uh, it, it's possible to make that look disjointed and broken, and then that wouldn't look right at all. So these, uh, these redraws are, are important, and they're actually kind of relaxing sometimes if you're having a stressful day or something, you just sit down and just kind of make the world go away and start drawing. Uh, shoes can be kind of an interesting, uh, you gotta get that angle of the shoe right. So I'm showing the bottom of the shoe, so work all that out. Again, make sure that leg lines up with, uh, with the top of his hip and uh, that has to be consistent. And I've got a, like a little fold down at the bottom of his pants, so. Drawing the shadow on the leg that's in, in back. And again, making sure that leg looks like it's fitting into the pants as the little, the little sock part pokes out of the bottom. There, that one's going off the page. Some wiggle lines. This little brother is really moving, <laughs> tormenting that little sister. So I think that looks a lot better um, than the than the original version. And so when you're uh, you're going to see the the black line ink here in a little bit, and um, it's substantially better. So hopefully I'll whet your appetite a little bit for some 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 be much better drawing. And again, I'm constructing the uh, the shoulders. Now, I, the one shoulder, if you look where the neck is going in to the baby sis, the, the younger sister's shirt there, one shoulder has way too much area to it, and the other one doesn't have much. I'm going to fix that in a little bit. Again, these are the problems that you kind of work through. I guess one way to kind of describe artwork is it's it's a it's a series of problems that you solve, and so. Some days maybe uh, we can have bad art days because those are days that um, aren't so good for problem solving. All right, and then um, getting those fingers to work. Hands are a are, are challenge and uh, I don't get them right all the time and they can take some time to to make look better, you know, constructing them. They're marvelous creations of God. And there I'm kind of fixing that shoulder a little bit more. All right, so we got that other hand back there. So hands are a good thing to practice. You can look at them in the mirror. Um, 
these days with phones with cameras on them you can take pictures of them so you can pose your hand in different poses and that's a great exercise for learning how to draw hands i highly recommend that and now her face needs some help so again we're drawing those orientation lines i wanted a sadder looking face so i'm lowered that top corner a bit and then uh She's got some pretty broad looking teeth there. So drawing, drawing the teeth kind of going back inside the mouth. So it's not just a row of flat teeth in the front. And her nose. Now girls have cute little noses, so these cartoon girls do. So there's her eyes, trying to make them crying. And her eyebrows are just tormented. trying to capture the emotion. And then the hair is surprisingly difficult sometimes. And um, it shows when <clears throat> it's a weakness. And for me, it's not a strength. So although I spent uh, quite a number of years drawing caricatures after this, and so I think drawing live people in front of me and uh, looking at hair has, um, has helped my skills along the way. So, um, Live drawing, just practice in general, is something that's very beneficial. And um, so, getting that bottom line of her uh, her her face, and fixing on that shoulder some more. There looks looks a little bit better. Yeah, to trim that trim that other shoulder off a little bit. Fix the flow of the bottom of her shirt. And then in the other side, the back back of the teeth and the back of the mouth. All right, we're getting there. Then those little teardrops. I think I got um, how to draw teardrops from Sergio Aragones from Mad Magazine. I used to copy his artwork all the time when I was probably about junior high age and uh, loved his style. And I think there's little bits of his style that have crept into mine and I still have the elements of that over the, over the years. So I just love, love, love his artwork. And he used to draw, you know, these worry teardrops flying off of faces when people would be stressed out or something. And so I, uh, I've, I've kind of continued that. I, I think it's a great little tool for, uh, expressing what's going on in a cartoon. Oh, that shoe, that, that shoe that I drew originally was horrible. So shoes can be kind of a tricky thing too. Hands and feet, something that um, if you're a young artist and you want to improve on artwork, um, some people try to stay away from hands and feet. And you'll see there's, there's even comic strips that have been made where it's just shoulders and heads because people don't want to draw hands and feet. So, you know, rush into those areas that are very, very hard and tackle them. And uh, you'll that'll be a great way to put you ahead of the rest is if you tackle those problem areas, those, uh, those hands and feet that people often struggle with. And then look at how other artists are drawing them too. Uh, another one of my favorite artists was Jack Davis, and uh, that guy drew marvelous hands and feet. He had his own way. When you saw Jack Davis' foot, you knew that was a Jack Davis foot. And again, the little speed lines. Hopefully, I have to overuse those. All right, so we're we're getting down to the end here with the red lines. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, I'm going to change the opacity on the red lines, so they're going to they're going to fade away. I think I might even um, draw more teardrops. She's really stressed out. All right, so we're going to adjust things now. Getting ready for the, uh, the ink, the black link, the black line inking. Uh, 
you know, I'm changing the opacity now, making the uh, the background, the original go away. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to knock the uh, opacity back for the red lines so that I can still see them, use them as a guide. But um, the, the lines that I draw on top of them are the ones that I really want to see now. So changing the size of the, uh, the, the ink pen, the, the brush that I'm using in Photoshop. Photoshop, by the way, is a really, really good art program. I think a lot of people hear the title Photoshop and they think that it's just good for photographs. But uh, there's lots of artists that, that use Photoshop for artwork. Now notice um, the, the line variation that I'm trying to put in here. I'm changing the pressure on my pen as I'm or the stylus that I'm drawing with. And so I'm on purpose pushing a little harder, lifting up and um, making some of these lines thicker and thinner the different objects that you're drawing to matter in, in line weight. And so I want the, the eyes are a little more delicate, and so I'm trying to draw them uh, with thinner, more delicate lines. And then the cheeks, um, thicker and thinner. The, uh, the eyeballs are important, or the pupils anyway. You leave that little uh, reflection in there. It really gives the, uh, the cartoon character life when you have that little reflection in there. If you notice, if you took that out, your cartoon character would look a little, a little dead. But then you put that that little dot of light in the eyeball, and it just brings them right to life. All right. So again, thick and thin. Inside the face, um, the lines tend to be thinner. Now you notice. Look at the the line on the nose. Now that nose sticks out or is separate from the rest of the face more than the cheeks. And so that's why I drew that line thicker to give that nose more separation from the rest of the face. And you'll notice when I ink the outline of the, uh, of the face and those types of lines, those are thicker than the inside the body shapes. So the mouth lines and some of those lines end up being thinner because they're inside the shape of the body. And so it's all about making, and even the teeth lines, look how thin those are because those are part of something. And you really don't want to draw a lot of attention to teeth anyway. I'm putting just enough detail in there so that you can see that they there's individual teeth. And then that uh, section of the teeth where the they go back into the mouth, giving that the mouth a little more dimension. All right, the bottom lip. Didn't really pencil that one in too much, but that works out more. And then I'm giving him a little more chin coming down from where I outlined the face. Now see that that face line, the outside line, there's got some more thickness. Actually, the nose was a little more thicker than the, the outside line, but generally the, the outline of the face or the body, those lines that um, capture the contour are, are gonna be thicker. And then the, the neck hole for the, the shirt. I'll put a little shadow underneath. Again, give that a little more pop. Anytime you can put some shadow in. Now, notice how much better the ink lines of, of this ink job look versus the, the original ones that I had. Um, the, the original is just hastily done. And so... Some artists can uh, just draw super fast. And um, and I don't think I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm comfortable going super fast yet. So, I mean, this redraw and the inkings is gonna take about a half hour of these two figures. So that's not too bad, really. But um, sometimes when I do my videos of, of things like this, I'll, um, I'll speed the video up so it looks like, wow, you went really fast. But, you know, if you double the speed, then, yeah, it looks faster. The, the thing that annoys me about speed painting videos, they're fascinating to watch. But I think they, uh, and I keep saying this, they, they give people the perception that that's how fast the artist is going. When we're just trying to give you a video without the tedious process that it takes a lot longer than people like to watch and so we speed things up.
to, to give the presentation of the overall process. But uh, this is actual time. I'm not speeding this up at all. So this is actually how long it takes to, to ink something. And it is work. So sometimes after an inking session, I can be a little, little tired. I want to take a little rest. Drawing caricatures all day long of live customers is super tiring. And I've done that for hours and hours and hours on uh, particular sessions on different days. Remember once we went to uh, Washington, D.C., and I did an outreach, participated in an outreach to the NEA, and... Uh, I had a line of people waiting an hour and a half to be drawn. Those poor people standing in line waiting for me to draw. And I was just cranking out caricature after caricature. Um, they were probably taking me five minutes or less per person. And um, I'll tell you about that in detail at some other time, but uh, it was quite the experience. So the tighter that the pencils are, those red lines underneath, I'll call those my pencils, um, the easier it is to ink. But that doesn't mean that I don't make up lines or I, I'm not actually redrawing as I'm inking. So sometimes I'll change my mind about that pencil line underneath and I'll re-ink something different than, um, than I penciled in. So again, the artist usually is always kind of reprocessing, rethinking, and uh, the, a number of times, going over something numerous times, is very, very helpful to kind of figure out the, the look and the, the pose, the action, the orientation of the objects and, and uh, how things should actually work. So time is very important for artists. You know, sometimes I joke that um, you know, people want things right away and they, they kind of think artists should should create like God, you know, speak things into existence. They want it now type of thing where where it takes artists up to, uh, well, long periods of time, let's put it that way. We can't think, we can't make things happen right away. But people think that that's, that's, that's what happens. The language that they use when they say, well, could you do this for me? Just, uh, yeah, just whip that out, you know, just, just make it, it shouldn't take you too long. People are all, non-artists are always seem very um, willing to tell the artist how long it's going to take because they don't want it to take real long. But uh, time and quality go together. So I get in the bottom of that shoe. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good looking little shoe there. I didn't draw any shoelaces. Just trying to keep that simple, but a little bit of lines. So, and again, oh, it, for those of you that don't know too, I'm, I'm inking and drawing the, all this on a, uh, a Wacom Cintiq, which is a digital drawing board drawing. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it looks just like a computer screen or monitor, but it has a stylus and I can draw right on the screen. And the stylus has a pressure sensitivity. I forget how many levels of it's like 2000 or 4000 something something like that crazy number but um they're they're trying to imitate um traditional artwork the ability to draw those types of things on in, on a digital device so and uh i love wacom products if you want to look that up it's w a c o m wacom cintiq and so they're not cheap but uh well worth well worth the money. So there's our our demon brother tormenting the little angel sister. And now little sister is going to get her ink treatment. Sometimes I'll ink each um, individual part on a different layer. But I'm not doing that here since they're pretty much where they should be anyway. But it just gives the freedom sometimes to uh, to separate things or move things around. So if I'm drawing this on the same layer, um, I could separate it. It just takes a little more work. So 
sometimes my cartoons end up having way too many layers because I'm drawing everything on its own layer. So it, uh, I'll just try to keep things a little more simple this time. And then figuring out where the black inside the mouth would be, what parts I'm going to leave without black that I can kind of color in. And again, the nice thing about digital ink is that you don't spill it on yourself. You don't spill it on the drawing board. And uh, when I ink with a real pen or a real brush, many times after that session, I'll have my, my, my fingers and thumbs that hold, hold the pen or the brush will be all covered with black ink. And uh, it's a little stressful with, with a live ink bottle on your drawing board. I don't think I've ever tipped one over and spilled it all over the place, but uh, certainly is a possibility. I'm going kind of quick with those lines, trying to keep them nice and, and lively. Sometimes if you go too slow with uh, ink lines, they can just look really stiff. But if you've got the, the motion with your, with your hand, and this is a learned thing if you, you practice. And uh, there's one that didn't go right, so I'm gonna make that second attempt and uh looks like that one looks good a little inside of the ear i gotta avoid that teardrop bring that up so again if you can get a flow to your lines but the curvy ones especially um and it's just a, a feel that you get after a while um i really learned how to draw with a with a brush in art school um, up to that point you know i'd look at comic books and i'd see these thick and thin lines and superheroes or whatever their artwork was and uh, so if i tried to redraw them i'd draw the lines in with a pen that didn't have any variation in it but i would draw the line and then i'd kind of scribble in the thickness part because i'm imitating the line that i'm seeing in front of me not realizing that the artist that made that did that in one stroke and said i'm you know scribbling back and forth trying to make my line thicker in places so it uh i i really fell in love with ink brushes right away when i found that out and they it's kind of like a calligraphy type of thing if you've ever done calligraphy before and i have a little bit you get those speedball uh pen nibs and the pens and any little discipline like that that you can engage in it really it helps you know when i was in um uh, junior high and high school, I took all kinds of classes that were art oriented or art related, but not necessarily drawing. You know, I took ceramics class and even in high school, I took uh, drafting, which yeah, that's drawing kind of, but uh, not, not the drawing that I wanted to do, but I didn't, I wasn't concerned that it wasn't where I wanted to go. It was, I wanted to learn something and uh, I learned lettering there and perspective and how to use tools, um, working on a real drawing board. So any little art thing that I could take, I did. And I think they really helped add to my, my abilities, my skill level. So when I went to art school, I already had advantages in some of the kids. Remember my graphics, uh, graphic art class in high school taught me how to develop things in the in the uh, photo lab the with chemicals and things and um, so that was something that we did in art school too and because I'd done it in high school I already knew how to do that now if you ask me to do that these days it's been so long I, I would have probably have to start over but um, that was fun this, this, the smell of those uh, chemicals too was memorable <laughs> so so but I, I do enjoy artists that have these lines that are very very graceful and, and very flowy 
And uh, I'm trying to do that here. It's been helpful to have a career too, where in places anyway, I've worked with different artists. When I was in Mellow Smello, I worked at a place, or when I was in Minnesota, I worked at a place called Mellow Smello. And uh, some of the artists there were very kind and would, uh, would help me with some critiques, you know, say, um, do this or don't do this. And so that was very, very helpful. And um, that's one thing too, as an artist, sometimes we don't like to, uh, to hear people tell us negative things, but whether they mean them in a loving way or a, or a negative way, because sometimes the criticisms can be thrown without good intentions, but both of those positive criticisms and negative crit criticisms can be can be useful tools and something that we shouldn't just discard and throw away because uh, people have a perception then their perception is important. Um, so we, we can benefit from criticism. I remember um, I was just talking to my mom about the first cartoonist that I ever met, Craig McIntosh. And uh, he was the cartoonist for the, min the editorial cartoonist for the Minneapolis star tribune, I think. And I remember one of the things that, uh, I was impressed by when he was talking to us about making cartoons was that he did not respect, again, from what I remember, he did not respect non-cartoonists um, making comments or criticisms about his cartoons because they, they weren't in his line of expertise. And so he kind of had this uh, feel anyway, as I remember being a young high school age kid, I think, um, that he just didn't want to seem to take the criticism from people that that uh, weren't artists. And I've thought about that over the years, and uh, it's I guess it seemed to work well for him. He was a fantastic artist. I, I think he's still alive. Um, but I think that, too, is something about the art community and how they perceive images. And um, here we're going to look at the original and see the difference between the two. Anyway, to sum that up, it's important to make a cartoon something that people that observe the cartoons can appreciate and enjoy. So it, it sometimes us artists can be a little carried away with uh, perception that way. So there's the first installment of the uh, redo of this cartoon. And this is as far as we're going to go today. And I'll pick up... Um, I'll pick up at some future date, maybe tomorrow, maybe a few, you know, a few uh, videos down the road, and I'll finish drawing this um, this cartoon. And um, so I hope you enjoyed that little inking session, uh, real live speed, not sped up at all. But um, again, that's that's about how fast I draw on a normal day, and I I was having a pretty good drawing day that day. My hand seemed to be into it, and and I'm looking at the cartoon now and I'm pretty pleased with it. So hopefully we can take it to the finish line and we'll color it and add the text and such. And, uh, and we'll make it a, a much improved launch pad cartoon. So thanks for joining me today. And uh, check out my website, danletha.com. And it's a good spot to look at some of the artwork that I've done in the past and some of the things that I'm working on currently. Um, I work for a ministry called Reasons for Hope, and so some of the videos that I've I've accumulated for for Reasons for Hope, I'm going to be updating them sometime soon. But uh, there's a collection of those on my website too. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining me in this live broadcast, and look for more videos in the future. And uh, have a